Greetings fellow Helldivers, welcome to a walkthrough guide on how to complete the hardest challenge in the galaxy. Deathless Full Clear Solo Helldive. The mission is simple, clear every objective and enemy outpost on the map and extract without dying. Today, we are reviewing an E-710 transfer mission on Hellmire. Let's go ahead and get our first stratagems called in. We call in resupply first, followed by shield pack and quasar cannon to optimize their call-in times. Our other stratagems are Eagle 500 kilogram bomb to answer Titans and Tesla tower for bait to de-aggro enemies. If you would like to review a comprehensive guide on stratagem selection, please see the link in the description. After we call in our stratagems, let's open the mini-map and plan our pathing route. The outposts are visible this game. The two sub-objectives are in the north and just south of Extract. The main objective is far in the west. There are two heavy nests in the north, and the rest of the outposts are spread out in the south around the main objective and illegal broadcast tower. Given this layout, it makes sense to work on the top of the map first, then swing down clockwise to finish up the rest of the map. Our first course of action is to hit the nearest heavy nest and bait out Bug Breach. This will let us then go to one of the sub-objectives and start it while Bug Breach is on cooldown. Hitting the Heavy Nest will also help clear the garrison units out and make completing it when we circle back much easier. I take the high ground over the nest to survey the area and try to spot patrols that might interrupt our plans. So far, the only visible patrol is a Charger Patrol to our left. This will force us into pathing counterclockwise around the nest. Since all Helldivers are right-handed patriots, heavy, circling close. heavy nests Everybody. counterclockwise maintains bug holes in sight, enabling simpler shooting as compared to twisting backwards to aim. Now that bug breach has been baited out, we can start to path to the first sub-objective. We want to get away from the breach area as fast as possible to avoid taking aggro and bringing a chain of enemies with us. I take a wide arching path to the sub-objective in the north to pull the bugs away from where I want to go and also to use the terrain to hide. As we approach the first sub-objective, we want to find an angle that will let us have good vision of the garrison. We can take this fight with less pressure now that bug breach is down. Our main concern is determining if there is a charger or two in the garrison. If not, our primary will be enough to handle the light enemies. One mechanic I'm working on improving is my reloading. Reloading with ammo left in the clip has a shorter reload animation as opposed to reloading on an empty clip. This makes a big difference in the speed with which you can finish fights. I found a good angle on the garrison and don't see a charger so I start to tap all of the enemies to apply fire damage. I don't get the quick reload here, as you can tell by the mag's empty audio cue. I also make the mistake of kiting backwards. I should instead be breaking for the terminal to get the objective started and save time. I just tap each hive guard to keep fire damage on them and save ammo. I see and hear the Titan and realize I'm actually under a lot of pressure, so I beeline to the terminal. Both sub-objectives on E710 transfer maps are pipe objectives. Pipe objectives have five steps. Activate the terminal, log into the terminal, redirect E710 from terminal, turn the three valves, and finally, reactivate the terminal. I attempted to catch the Titan with a 500 kilogram bomb, but miss. To avoid getting bug breached on objective, I decide to save my second bomb and go back to the weakened heavy nest and work on clearing it. I also don't just throw the second bomb here because there's a good chance I'll drop aggro from this Titan and I may need it if another Titan comes out of the next bug breach. I'm well stocked on grenades for this raid and I have Quasar as backup if I miss a few shots. Since we aggroed the garrison before, the nest is relatively unguarded. I feel comfortable dropping in so I can use my grenades from closer range. If you're able to get close to the bug holes, it's better to use grenades and save some grenade pistol ammo in case you get forced back out of the nest and need to make longer distance shots. If you are on a hunter map though, your incendiary grenades are more precious and should be used for hole clear more sparingly. I weave in a quasar shot to help my ammo. 
The pressure is mounting now, so I'm forced to leave the nest. Without a good angle on the last bug hole, I use my remaining eagle to pop it and finish the outpost. Bug breach is off cooldown, so my plan is to head to the next pipe objective, activate the terminal while aggroing the garrison and triggering the next bug breach. Then swing back up north to finish the first pipe objective and start the other heavy nest. We have a bit of a poor angle on the garrison from here, but I decide to rush the terminal due to the pressure from the patrol on my flank. This is fine because I expect to get bug breached, so the only realistic progress I can make is just getting the terminal activated. I pop the scavenger quickly, but don't take a longer fight with the brood commanders and touch the terminal. Bug breach gets activated as expected, so I leave immediately and start heading for the first pipe objective. A mechanic to keep in mind is to slide down walls instead of running off of ledges to avoid getting staggered or taking fall damage. An important feature to keep in mind is stamina builds faster if you are crouched or prone. Use this to refill your stamina meter quickly and stay mobile. We've escaped the bug breach and can now head back to the first pipe objective. Now that bug breach is on cooldown, we can complete the objective under much less pressure. We have around 33 minutes left to go. This pace is feeling good especially with how clean that heavy nest clear was. We have not encountered many side objectives Checking though, and North need West. to keep an meters. eye out for them after we finish the sub-objective and start working on the second heavy nest. At this point, I'm guessing that there should be some side objectives in the blank space on the northwest of the map. The first pipe objective is coming into view. We need to log into the terminal, redirect the E710, turn the valves, then reactivate the terminal. We are free to just walk on to the objective after clearing it previously, but need to stay vigilant for patrols. The best way to approach redirecting the E710 flow on pipe objectives is to start from the last column of pipes and work backwards. With the flow redirected, we can start turning the valves. There's a patrol incoming, so I elected to refill my supplies before looking for the second valve. Fire tornadoes have spawned, and I need to be mindful of my pathing so I don't get caught out. I can't see well in this light and miss the valve that's covered by the egg sac. Under pressure from the patrol, I decide to run to the third valve to at least get that one done. The patrol turns out to be hunters. I spray it down quickly to keep them staggered and unable to call bug breach. The fire has engulfed the remaining valve area, so I'll need to wait for it to subside until I can turn it. I run over to the terminal just to confirm I'm looking at the right location. The fire is helping me clear the rest of the hunter patrol. A scavenger is the only enemy that makes it through the fire, and I dispatch it with rather poor aim. I see the egg sac pop from fire damage, so I know the valve is there now. The fire tornado is still covering the area I need to get to, so I'll need to continue waiting. There is a brood commander patrol incoming. This is a huge threat to my run, because bug breach is off cooldown, and if that gets activated, I'll need to leave the objective, losing precious time. They haven't seen me yet, so I decide to stay out of sight and let their pathing take them through the fire. With most of the patrol destroyed and the fire burned out, I can sneak over to the valve and turn it. Now, all that's left to do is touch the terminal to finish the objective. I path with a wide angle away from the unsuspecting brood commander and narrowly avoid a fire tornado as I make my way back to the terminal. With the first sub-objective complete, we need to clear the last outpost in the north. I look for a place to drop down, but a charger patrol has blocked my route. 
It would be especially dangerous to drop down here because if we get staggered from the fall, the charger will have time to stomp us. I find a safer path, but the way forward is blocked by fire. I need to wait and prepare to fight the charger. With the path now clear, it's only a short run to the next heavy nest. A shrieker nest also comes into view. I won't be able to finish the nest on this pass through both the pressure of the shrieker nest and bug breach, and I also don't have time to sit around and shoot all three spires. I decide to bait a bug breach, then rush the shrieker nest for the hell bomb clear. I don't bother shooting the shriekers here, because I don't want to further aggro the garrison and have to call in the hell bomb under pressure. A brood commander patrol cuts me off, so I call down Tesla Tower to take aggro. If I don't do this, the patrol will follow me to the shrieker nest and make it difficult to successfully activate the hell bomb. Under less pressure now, I take a few shots to thin out the Shriekers and get Hellbomb called in. Remember that the terminal will always face away from the direction you call it, so place the beacon with this in mind. The Hellbomb should be dead center of the spires. Now that the beacon is placed, I need to clean up the last brood commander that made it through the Tesla Tower. In the distance, Tesla Tower is destroyed by a Bile Titan. It did its job, and kept aggro off of me long enough to get the hell bomb called in. This maneuver may have looked easy, but it was accomplished through careful management of enemy Elbow aggro bar. and cooldowns. Circling back to the heavy nest is untenable under pressure from a Titan, so I decide to continue west and scout for any side objectives. The radar station quickly comes into view. This is extremely fortunate to encounter now because it will reveal the other side objectives, allowing for an optimized pathing. Bug Breach should still be on cooldown, so I need to get there as fast as possible and engage the garrison before it can come back online. The radar station objective has four steps in two phases. The first phase is terminal activation. First turn on the terminal, then wait a short time and press it again to start raising the satellite tower. The tower takes a while to fully engage. So often, you will need to do this objective in two passes. The second phase requires you to align the satellite dish and press the terminal to complete the objective. It helps to check the terminal first before you start so you know which direction to turn the dish. You will also hear a beep from the terminal when the dish is aligned correctly. After making quick work of the garrison, I activate the terminal and begin the tower raising process. While I wait, I run back and refill my supplies. I place these supplies strategically because I know I will need to circle back to finish the heavy nest and need to do so with a full grenade inventory. I hear another patrol, but ideally I want to wait for the raising process to be complete so I can see which direction I need to turn the radar on the terminal before I leave. Bug Breach is up, so this patrol will drop it if I take aggro. I don't want to trigger Bug Breach, so I leave the radar objective. I realize how far west I've gotten and decide to do a quick run-by of the main objective to soften up the garrison while I'm here. My plan now is to hit the main objective to aggro the garrison and trigger Bug Breach, clear the furthest nest, then make it back to finish the radar station. I don't finish these bugs off and allow them to bug breach further from the nest I'm targeting. To further aggro the garrison, I throw my grenades into the area. I specifically want to hit the area around the valve so I can finish that part of the objective quickly when I come back. This is a medium nest. Clearing it is similar to clearing a heavy nest on a smaller scale. We need to circle it and hit the holes with grenade pistol. I start the nest off with Quasar to save one grenade. A hunter patrol made it to us from the bug breach. I have to turn and engage. Hunters must always be respected. 
If you keep circling this type of medium nest at a consistent pace, the garrison will keep getting blocked by the terrain and will have a hard time getting out. This makes clearing these relatively straightforward and you should usually be able to clear them in one pass. I toss Eagle here to try to get the Charger and the Bug Hole in one shot. I don't trust the damage radius of the Eagle to get the other hole, so I go ahead and pop it with Grenade Pistol. This was not a great use of Eagle and my poor aim forced it out. With the nest cleared, we head back to finish the radar station. We will then need to circle back and finish the heavy nest. We have around 24 minutes remaining, so I'm feeling a bit of pressure especially given this heavy nest has not been aggroed and will likely need two passes to finish. I'm estimating that I'll be able to clear it in around four minutes, so that leaves 20 minutes for the rest of the map. What luck. I get gifted an aligned radar. This can sometimes happen. I don't need to actually go to the tower I can just press the terminal to complete the objective. This saved a ton of time and probably the run. I would have needed two passes to finish radar if I had to stop at the tower, because if I fight the pursuing bugs there, I'll probably get bug breached and need to leave the objective. Now that radar is up, we can see the rest of the side objectives. It looks like our optimal pathing route is still going to be to complete the heavy nest then swing down the map clockwise since the remaining side objectives are also clustered together in the south. North, 200 meters. I make a critical error here and do not bait a bug breach on the pursuing enemies. Had I done this, I could have entered the nest area under much less pressure and possibly been able to clear it in one pass. Bug breach is the most important cooldown to manage and controlling it correctly can make the difference between a completed run and failing the mission. The most deadly enemy in solo Helldive Deathless Extract attempts is time. Always look for ways to improve your efficiency. We've made it back to the second heavy nest. Clearing two in one mission is a lot of work. I start with the Quasar Cannon to save ammo, then begin my run around the circle. When clearing heavy nests, remember to just keep running around the outside. It will be hard for enemies to path out of the nest to get to you, as there are only a few places they can get out. I take aggro from the charger here, but just keep running and steer it into the sheer cliff face before it can make it up to high ground. Throwing grenade! Bug breach goes off, so I'll need to leave the nest area soon to pull the bugs away, then come back to finish up the nest. Quasar is off of cooldown, so I use it to clear another bug hole. I could have gotten a lot more holes cleared on this pass, but my aim with the grenade pistol was off due to both the enemy and time pressure I'm feeling. I run out of ammo here after some poor shot placement. I go ahead and drop Eagle to clear an extra hole since no Titans came out of the bug breach, so I don't need it immediately. Getting more mission progress is definitely worth the cooldown. I also need to get a resupply down somewhere safe and refill my grenade pistol for the second pass. I drop Tesla Tower to absorb the aggro, then loop around the terrain to find a good place to drop resupply. I throw the resupply beacon as far as I can towards where I want to go, then hold my ground. This will give me space to kite any enemies that make it through the Tesla Tower while I wait for the supplies to drop in. The Tesla Tower is doing a good job of taking aggro, so there's not much pressure while I wait. I take three of the four supplies to get my grenade pistol up to six shots and save the last one in case I need to circle back and refill my ammo. Now, fully equipped, I'm ready for the second pass on this heavy nest. Fire tornadoes have spawned and are helping clear out some of the enemies. It also looks like the fire destroyed some of the bug holes too. I take a shot on this charger to try to clear it before dropping into the nest. There's a few hunters too that I need to take out before progressing. 
I drop into the nest to get a better angle on the remaining holes with both my grenades and grenade pistol. A warrior spawns from this hole, so I quickly switch to my primary to remove it, then throw my grenade to the side to try and avoid a second one. I run to the next hole and consider using Quasar, but don't want to lose shield to the scavengers and decide to just grenade it. I clear the other hole that's close to me and spot out the final hole across the nest. I don't want to get close to it under all of that enemy pressure, so I climb out of the nest and finish it with Quasar from distance. Dropping a pin, southeast. That's both meters. heavy nests down and the north of the map Eagle fully cleared, but there's no time to celebrate. With 20 minutes on the clock, we have to make it back to finish the second pipe objective, then swing down to clear out the remaining side objectives and outposts before finally completing the main objective. I realize I'm going to need to bait Bug Breach before going to the objective area, so I scope out the enemies on the map to pick my engagement. It looks like there is a patrol stuck in the heavy nest terrain, so I double back and use them to trigger Bug Breach. I probably should have thrown the Tesla Tower in the opposite direction of where I want to go here, but sometimes this does not work out, and it's better to deploy it closer to the objective so it can also deal with patrols. With Bug Breach now on cooldown, it's time to head over to the pipe objective. Fire tornadoes have spawned again, which I'm hoping will interrupt the pathing of the enemies pursuing me. The objective is actually fairly close to where I popped Bug Breach, and with a bit more foresight, I could have triggered it earlier on a loot objective garrison and avoided the bugs following me all the way to the objective. I dropped Tesla Tower here to try to cut them off, but I should have held it and dropped it on the high ground in the objective area where that first brute commander was. Under pressure, I don't take long fights with the remaining brood commanders and hive guards and just kite them to make it to the terminal. A bile titan has followed me from the bug breach. I try to quickly get an eagle down on it while it's focused on the Tesla tower, but mistime it and it's able to walk away. I do manage to log into the terminal, but that's all I can accomplish for now. So I leave the objective area and draw the enemies away from it so I can come back for another pass. I use my second eagle here, because if I'm able to KO the Titan, I should be able to fight back through the remaining enemies to get more tasks completed, but its pathing gets interrupted by the terrain and it stops following me. I'm low on ammo, so I get a resupply called in. It sounds like the Titan died to the fire tornado. I want to keep advancing mission progress while Bug Breach is on cooldown, so I press the objective area again and chip away at the remaining enemies while waiting for resupply. Really unfortunate. I did not switch back to my primary after dealing with the charger which let this brood commander get a bug breach off. I was really surprised by this because I thought bug breach's cooldown was much longer, but I guess it's actually around two minutes. There's not much I can do at this point, but flee the objective area and try to come back once all of the bugs have left. I need to use this time to start working on the remaining side objectives or I won't have enough time to finish them all. I have a good angle on the spore spewer, so I take that out while I wait for the bugs to leave the objective area. I really need to avoid taking aggro here due to the presence of a bile titan, so I make a very wide loop around to avoid it. This also allows me to get more stratagems off of cooldown and ready for the next fight. I also have the option of stopping at extract to drop supplies, but given the time crunch, we will likely be going for a last minute extract after the destroyer leaves, rather than a traditional one, so supplies won't be necessary.
I'm able to make it back to the objective without taking aggro. The right side of the terminal area is not traversable, so I need to double back to the left side. I quickly get the redirect flow task done by working backwards. I notice that there is a charger patrol incoming, so I start with the valve furthest away from it to avoid aggro. I'm also able to get the second valve turned before the patrol can get to me. Target priority is hunters first, then the charger. This patrol bug reaches me again. At this point, I'm pretty sure I'll lose the mission as I will need to leave the objective area and circle back. Enemies from the first bug breach are still on the map, which further complicates my pathing. There's no time for pity, and I need to get away quickly to avoid aggro. I spot out the illegal broadcast tower in the distance. I try to get a bit of high ground, but take a bad angle and get blocked by terrain. That shot alerted the nearby enemies, so I need to fight off the hunters and try to get back to the objective area and sneak a quick complete. I've also aggroed the Bile Titan. This is a disaster as I won't be able to finish the objective under Bile Titan pressure. I get Eagle down in its path to try to get some damage on it as I head for the last valve. The Eagle gets the one shot on it. This literally saves the entire mission as there would be no way to get the valve turned here if the Titan was still alive. With the last valve turned, I head to the terminal to complete the objective. Now all that's left is the illegal broadcast tower, a second shrieker nest, two outposts, and the main objective. This is a lot to get done in the remaining time of 12 minutes. While we softened up main objective earlier, it will likely take around five minutes to do, even if we avoid the first bug breach. That leaves only seven minutes to clear four objectives, two of which are garrisons that may need multiple passes to finish. My plan is to pop the broadcast tower and look for a quick hell bomb on the shriekers if possible. Then I need to hit one of the nests to trigger a bug breach. After that, I need to go to the other nest and hit that to get its garrison to leave, then complete main objective, and finally circle back to finish the nests. This will give me some time cushion on main objective, which needs to be South. finished before the destroyer leaves orbit. I can clear the weakened nests in overtime while the extract timer is running if I have to. I'm finding good angles on the shrieker nest and target it over the broadcast tower because it's covering the outposts and denying my entry. I also do not want to go for a hell bomb clear because bug breach is up and the outposts are close to the shrieker nest, so there's no way to avoid me being pressured during the hell bomb call. I just need to keep hitting the spires on cooldown. I can safely enter the area when there is one spire left. One shrieker spawning is manageable. A patrol has forced me to the east. I really do not want an engagement because I'm not ready to go to the main objective yet, and triggering bug breach will force me to. The remaining spire is damaged, so I'll look to clean up the broadcast tower, then pivot back west. The shrieker nest 
is much less threatening now, so I feel more comfortable entering its range and hitting the outpost under it. I find an angle on the broadcast tower and take it out. Had I been able to hit this shot earlier, it would have saved me 10 to 15 seconds here. I'm now in range of the Shrieker Nest, but don't start firing on them, as I don't want to alert the outpost garrison. I also run into a Bile Titan patrol. I need to save Quasar to finish the Shrieker Spires, so my only option is to run. I wait for Bile Titan's spew attack to go on cooldown before charging my attack and finishing the Shrieker Nest. With the Spires all down, I need to get back to the outpost and hit the garrison. I'm very low on stamina and still being chased by a Bile Titan, so I take a wide route around the Shrieker Nest area to scrape the Titan aggro off on the terrain. I go for an Eagle here, which was not a great use of resources in hindsight because my plan was to ditch the Titan in the large terrain anyway. I really could have used that Eagle to help in the outpost fights coming up. I go prone behind rock cover to build my stamina up faster then break out for the closest nest. I've seemed to have lost the Titan, I think due to the terrain and not the eagle one-shotting it. Unfortunately, I'm not able to approach the light nest with an angle on the holes. There is also a charger that needs to be answered immediately. I just quasar the charger, which triggers bug breach. There's no time now to stick around. I need to stick to the plan and go to main objective while Bug Breach is on cooldown, hitting the other nest on the way. How about a nice cup of liver tea? I get a grenade down on the second nest to aggro the garrison, but I can't spend much more time here. I need to make it to main objective as fast as possible so I have a chance of clearing it before time runs out. There are a few enemies in the alleyway that leads to the terminal. I want to make it to the terminal high ground before I start the engagement, so I path around these enemies to approach from a different angle on the stairs. This was an excellent pathing decision, as it allowed me to get the drop on this charger before it was fully aggroed. With the charger down, bug breach on cooldown, and only a handful of light enemies to deal with, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. The main objective for E710 transfer missions has seven steps across two phases. After turning on the terminal, we need to turn a valve to start the flow of E710 and confirm on the terminal. We then need to assist the Pelican with transferring the E710 by locking and unlocking the transfer hose two times each. There is a short wait time while the Pelican is transferring. It's advisable to use this time to get back to the high ground and look out for patrols. With the valve turned, I need to make it back to the terminal to get the Pelican to start the transfer phase. I make it back to the terminal under pressure from a blue commander patrol. I drop Tesla Tower to answer it, but it's able to get a bug breach off. I retreat to the back of the objective area, so the enemies will need to funnel through the alleyway to get to me. I charge dive into this charger patrol to avoid getting staggered by the light enemies behind me. I need to actually fight this bug breach, since there is no time left to run and pull them away from the objective. The narrow terrain lets me get two good fire grenades down, which rack up a lot of kills. A Bile Titan spawned from the Bug Breach. I drop Eagle on it while baiting out its spew attack. It starts moving again before the bomb lands, so the blast is only able to pop its Bile Sack, turning off its spew attack. I prefer fighting them when their spew attack is up because it's easier to bait and dodge than their stomp attack. The pressure forces me to back up and try to finish it with Quasar. 
However, I make a bad dive and stagger myself on rocky terrain. This is the worst feeling in the galaxy. I'm able to make to a narrow passageway and the Titan isn't able to follow me. Unfortunately, the terrain is now blocking me from returning to the objective and I have to run a long and circuitous road back around. I spot chargers in the distance. Since I am crossing open terrain, I need to thin them out. I pick off the one closest to me and swing wide around the other one. Five minutes left. Liberty speed your step, I make it back to the objective area at the five minute mark. I avoid the charger with my pathing and lock the fuel hose. It's here I make the most important play of the game. I get the perfect Tesla tower placement. It's a beautiful placement, on high ground, covering a flank and away from the fuel hose so I don't risk getting shocked. This tower does so much work here, it's unreal. I just need to hang out on high ground while I wait for the fuel hose to come off of the pool deck. I get a clutch pick on the brood commander attempting to bug breach, and finally get the last fuel hose unlocked for the mission complete. A bug How breach goes like off, of but that's freedom. fine, because we've already finished the objective. Freedom triumphs over tyranny once more. The extraction shuttle awaits your The fire request. cuts off my pathing, so I need to find an alternate route. Unfortunately, I need to destroy the Tesla tower so I can pass through this area. Rest in freedom, good friend. Only two minutes left on the clock before Tacking the destroyer leaves Southeast. orbit. Meters. I need to finish off the two remaining outposts, then make it back to extract. I miss picking up the ammo here, which could prove to be a costly mistake as I am dangerously low on primary ammo. The bug breach enemies have caught up with me and I am now in a fight for my life on low stamina. While I'm able to make it back to the nest, the Charger and Titan pressure me away. I'm weighing my options here and I think it's better to loop back and finish the medium nest rather than run to the light nest then have to fight back through the enemies to get to the medium nest. Say hello to democracy! Dropping a pin, north, 100 meters. I try to get this eagle off on the Titan to ease the pressure a bit, but my pathing pulls it away from the damage radius. The Charger has re-aggroed, and I need to dive out of its way. 
I just keep running here to stay as far away from the Titan as possible. I try to get a dive shot off on the Charger, but it's too close, so I bail out at the last second. Only one minute left. The pressure is boiling over. I've finally made it back to the medium nest and go to work on it. I get Tesla Tower down for a quick distraction while I finish the nest. Okay, only one outpost left. I have no stratagems off cooldown and am almost out of ammo, so all I can do is run into the nest while avoiding enemies. Tagging map, east, 100 meters. I come over the ridge to see the full garrison is still on the outpost, despite aggroing it earlier. This won't be easy. I'm only able to get one of the holes on the first pass. The destroyer has left, and I'm on my own into stoppage time. It's down to the wire now. The enemies pursuing me have caught up and have cut me off from the nest. I look to take a wide angle around the Titan, but that will take me into open terrain where the Charger will have a huge advantage. I instead decide to loop back and hug the terrain for cover and avoid the Charger. I accidentally fat finger my grenade pistol, as I thought I had quasar cannon. This really hurts because I'll need to perfectly hit both shots on the bug holes now. I try to get a diving shot off on the charger, but the hive guard blocks it. Desperate now, and with two minutes left in extract time, I go prone to build stamina for a final dash to the nest. That's it. All objectives and outposts cleared. Now the daunting task of making it to extract through all of this pressure. I have a little over a minute left on the clock, and will then have 20 seconds before the pelican departs. I've managed to shake off the Charger and Titans, but I'm still far away from Extract. I try to take damage by diving from this rock so I can pop another stim, but don't get it. I'm really fearing for the run at this point. All of that work could be totally wasted. This is it. No turning back. I go prone to build stamina for the final run. Now or never. Countdown initiated. Stand by for takeoff. <laughs> yes, we got there. One second left. It took me around four days of streaming to get this five-star run, so I'm ecstatic at this point. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. 
please like and subscribe and join me on stream for more Solo Helldive Deathless Extract attempts. These videos take a lot of time to make, so I greatly appreciate your support. Go forth and spread democracy.